Inshallah, to, to begin our program tonight, I'd like to invite to the microphone someone that will be leading us in the Tarawih Salah uh, here at Masjid al-Siddiq. We're indeed honored to have him back with us here at Masjid al-Siddiq. He led us in Salat al-Maghrib. Uh, Kari Ramadan, Kari Mahmoud Ramadan uh, is one that uh, started coming to Masjid al-Siddiq and has been part of the family here for many years and then for some time due to other circumstances uh, he's been separated from us. This is the first year in maybe I think maybe five or six years that he is once again Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed him and be able to have him come with us and spend the month of Ramadan with us and inshallah we we thank and we praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for allowing this well, we pray that our Shaykh uh, continues to improve in his recitation and returns home safely to his family. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always protect him. Ameen. Uh, Kari Mahmoud Ramadan memorized the Quran in his uh, 20s, uh, 24 years old. And he has not only uh, perfected the recitation of uh, the Quran, but also in understanding it. Uh, he's uh, studied the Quran and has a master of science uh, in terms of the science of tafsir of the Quran. Uh, so he looks at the words but also at the meaning and how to implement it. Uh, so alhamdulillah, it gives me great pleasure to ask Kari Mahmoud Ramadan to recite for us a little bit. Uh, he will be reciting from Surah Al-Baqarah verses uh, 183 to 186. Kari Ramadan. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا كتب عليكم الصيام كما كتب على الذين من قبلكم كما كتب على الذين من قبلكم لعلكم تتقون أياما معدودات فمن كان منكم مريضا أو على سفر أو على سفر فعدة من أيام أخر وعلى الذين يطيقونه فدية طعام مساكين فمن تطوع خيرا فهو خير له وأن تصوموا خير لكم إن كنتم تعلمون شهر رمضان الذي أنزل فيه القرآن هدى للناس هدى للناس وبينات من الهدى والفرقان فمن شهد من الشهر فليصم ومن كان مريضا أو على سفر فعدة من أيام أخر 
يريد الله بكم اليسر ولا يريد بكم العسر ولتكملوا العدة ولتكبروا الله على ما هداكم ولتكبروا الله على ما هداكم ولعلكم تشكرون وإذا سألك عبادي عني فإني قريب أجيب دعوة الداعي إذا دعان فليستجيبوا لي وليؤمنوا بي لعلهم يرشدون صدق الله العظيم Takbir, Allahu Akbar MashaAllah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always protect our brother and continue to increase him in his knowledge and his recitation of the Quran in, and having an impact I mean, I mean. Inshallah, uh, our next speaker will touch on some of the verses that uh, he, he recited, as well as others, as he spoke, he recited in some of the verses that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala reminded us about Ramadan. And Ramadan is a month of great benefit, of great blessing, of great barakah. And tonight, Alhamdulillah, uh, our next speaker will. Help us to reminders, for verily reminders are good for the believers. Uh, remind us of some of the virtues of Ramadan and its importance and being prepared for it. As I mentioned earlier, we have a guest coming and that is Ramadan. And we prepare for our guest so that we can reap the most benefit we can from them. From the month. Our next speaker is our dear Sheikh. Ustad, friend, Sheikh Ibrahim Al Huri is involved in many activities, dawa work, charitable work. He is a khatib, an imam, and an inspiration to youth. He does a lot of work with the youth. He studied in Sudan and has many teachers. I can go on and on in his accolades, but I know he's very shy, so I'm going to stop. Alhamdulillah, he has uh, blessed us here at Majid al Sadiq with a class this uh, few months on purifying the soul. And we pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless him and bless the students and make them all benefit from that. And again, we're honored to have him here with us tonight as our uh, keynote speaker for this program. And so, I, without further ado, I give you uh, Sheikh uh, Ibrahim al Huri. إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا ما يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء وتقوا الله الذي تساءل نبيه والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Firstly, جزاك الله خير our brother Ayam and all of the management of the masjid, may Allah reward you for your efforts and your diligence. A lot of the times, the people behind the scenes who are servicing these masajid, they do not get the thanks or the appreciation that they deserve. A lot of this work that is being done is done uh, for free. 
And alhamdulillah, the brothers, they sacrifice their time and their effort when they can be going out, making money, relaxing, or their time off from work. So may Allah bless them and reward them. Allahumma ameen. May Allah bless the Imam of the community as well and give him good and barakah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all the good brothers and sisters of this community of Masjid Siddiq and Ozone Park and Queens all together. Barakallahu feekum. May Allah bless all of you for coming out. Jazakumullah khair. Before we get into it, we must thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In a time like this, in a time where we see misguidance all over the place, we see people upon dalala, people going astray. Up is now down and down is now up. The sky is not blue anymore to the people. Right? The natural fitrah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created mankind upon, we see mankind going against that. The natural disposition that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made innate in all of mankind, we see today in 2023 people are going against that natural disposition. But alhamdulillah rabbil alameen, we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his guidance. And we should thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this guidance constantly over and over again. Because wallahi my brothers and sisters is not something light. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen us for this religion. If it was for ourselves, we cannot guide our own selves. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala acknowledges that in Surah Al-A'raf. When the people of Jannah enter the paradise, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from Ahlul Jannah, say Ameen. وَقَالُوا الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ الَّذِي هَدَانَ لِهَادَ وَمَا كُنَّا لِنَهْتَدِيَا لَوْلَا أَنْ هَدَانَ اللَّهِ And the people of Jannah, they would acknowledge Allah's blessing of guidance. They will say, praise be to Allah, the one who has guided us to this. And we would not have been able to guide ourselves if we were to try. For guidance is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And none of us would have been able to purify ourselves if we were left to ourselves. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah An-Nur, وَلَوْلَا فَضَّ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكُمْ وَرَحْمَتُهُ مَا زَكَى مِنْكُمْ مِنْ أَحَدٍ أَبَدًا وَلَكِنَّ اللَّهُ يُزَكِّي مَنْ يَشَى if it was not for Allah's bounty and His mercy upon all of you, none of you would have been able to purify Himself. We have not have made one tasbih, one tahmeed, one takbir, one salah, one sajda, one reading of Quran, one dhikr. No good for our own self if it was not for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we thank Allah azza wa jal constantly over and over and over again. Naam. And after that, inshaAllah, we want to get into our topic. And of course, it's Ramadan. But I don't want to come here and just speak nicely, Wallahi. I don't want to come here and tell a story. I don't want to come here and waste your time. I don't want to come here and you say, MashaAllah, we had a night, nice night. Wallahi, I want to come here and I want to motivate you. And I want to encourage you. And I want you to understand how much of a mercy and how much of a bounty, inshaAllah, we're about to step into in the month of Ramadan. This is not a month of eating, my brothers and sisters. It's not a month of parties, my brothers and sisters. This is a month of rectification of our souls. This is a month of tawbah, repentance to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is a month of breaking bad habits. This is a month of our necks being saved from the hellfire. This is a month of drawing near to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Naam. The Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he used to say to his companions, when Ramadan will come, قَدْ جَاءَكُمْ شَهْرُ رَمَضَانِ شَهْرٌ مُبَارَكٌ He used to say to his companions, Ramadan has came to you, a blessed month. He would speak of the month of Ramadan as if it was an individual, as if it was a companion, as if it was a visitor, right? We know Ramadan is a month, it's a time, it's not a human being. But the Prophet Wasallam will give the example as if what? It is coming to you like a visitor, but it's not any visitor. Rather, it's Shahrun Mubarak. It's a blessed visitor. And from the characteristics of a visitor is what? It comes and it goes. The visitor doesn't stay with you through, throughout the whole year or for the rest of the time. Rather, it comes for a period of time, ayam and ma'adudat, a number of days, and it will go. Right? So we should treat it as such. And a visitor of this magnitude, my brothers and sisters, we should not take lightly. Rather, it will be bad manners for us to treat it like anyone else. So for us to treat it like something or someone who is not a virtue. We should treat this month as if we are getting visited from an ambassador, from a president, from a great alam, from the greatest of people coming to our house. If the greatest of people, they were going to be in your home and you were going to be housing them, you will be planning from weeks or maybe months in advance. Weeks or maybe months in advance, cleaning your home, 
cleaning the place they're going to stay, making sure you give them the best sheets, making sure you fill your fridge with the best of food, make sure you speak to your farm and you say, listen, we have this visitor coming, this person is of this and this stature, this and this status. Make sure you're upon your best behavior. You speak to your children, hey, don't be screaming, don't be acting up, right? You're going to make sure everybody's in their best dress. You're going to make sure that you spread your schedule and you make sure you free your schedule that you're going to be with that individual for all their needs, correct? This is when we have an important visitor. But this visitor, Ramadan, is more important than any visitor that can come to your house. This is a visitor that if you give it the time and you prepare for it, your life will change. And I speak like this not just because it's my job to speak like this. I speak like this to you from conviction. This is something, right, this month of Ramadan is something that's very dear to me. I've actually had experience on, yani, when we actualize Ramadan, what it will do to you. I remember as a young man, and people may think, yani, I, I grew up like this. I didn't grow up like this. I didn't grow up in the masjid like some of these young, young kids. May Allah bless all of you and your families. I didn't grow up reading the Quran. I didn't learn Arabic. I didn't know any of that. I was away for a number of years. When I became a young adult, right? I was Muslim for a Muslim family, but just like many people, we get caught up in the society, right? And we're away from the dhikr and we're away from the masjid. That was me. As a young man, right? As a young man, I remember my father, he told me something. May Allah bless him. It's not an ayah, it's not a hadith. He said to me, Ya Ibrahim, all the 11 months are for you. You did what you wanted to do. But Ramadan is for Allah Azza wa Jal. It's not an ayah, it's not a hadith. It's a father speaking to his son. Trying to get him to possibly come and start practicing Islam. Right? All the months were for you. But this month of Ramadan, this is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That dug deep in my heart. Right? Maybe he didn't know it dug deep in my heart. But it did. And sometimes the fathers, we speak to our children. Right? And you're talking and you're talking. You don't know what's going to hit the heart. You don't know what seed is going to be planted and it's going to sprout. That word he said to me is stuck in my head. And I had a lot of things going on. Things that I should not have been involved in. But I took that advice. I put all these things to the side. And when Ramadan came, I buckled down. I fasted. The correct fast. Fasting from the food and drink, but also fasting from all prohibited things. I made sure and I made a pact to myself. I'm going to read the Quran from the front to the back. At this time, I did not know Arabic. I had a translation. I made sure every single day I will go to the masjid and I'll make tarawih and I'll break my fast with the Muslims in the masjid. Within one to two weeks, all the things I was involved in, I left them. Iman entered inside of my heart and wallahi, tallahi, billahi, my brothers and sisters, it was the sweetest thing that I ever felt in my life. It was better than any desire that I could have or I was trying to achieve. When, when, when I actualize Ramadan, and alhamdulillah, and I don't say this fakhran, I don't say it to show off, I say this to encourage you. When that iman entered my heart, my brothers and sisters, it was the best feeling I felt in my life. And the people who experienced, because we're Muslims, right? But some of us, we never really felt the iman yet. We, the iman, we didn't feel it yet. Some of us were going with the emotions, we're going with the flow. But that iman, that faith, that taqwa, that belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that belief in the akhirah. Some of us, we have never truly actualized it. At that time, I felt it. And I was ready to leave everything and change my life. And from that time, I started changing my life. And you see me here today. It started when, my brothers and sisters? In Ramadan. In Ramadan. And I know for a fact, this is the plan and the formula of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you were to obey Allah azza wa jalla and follow what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has taught us and follow his sunnah and the way of the early generations, how they approached this month, and this month and how they acted in this month, you will see change. There's no way around it. No doubt about it. You're going to change yourself. You're going to let go of those bad habits. You're going to let go of those sins that you've accumulated that you cannot kick. You're going to let go of it. You're going to become a better Muslim. You're going to become closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No doubt about it. Naam. So the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he used to say, قَدْ جَاءَكُمْ شَهْرُ رَمَضَانِ This month of Ramadan has came to you. شَهْرُ Mubarak, A blessed month. What are the blessings of this month? What are the blessings? He explained to us. He explained to us. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he's not speaking from his whims. Rather, this is revelation that's revealed to him. لَا يَنْتِقُوا عَلَى الْهَوَى He doesn't speak from his desires. إِنْ هُوَ إِلَّا وَحْيٌ يُوحَى Allah revealed to him. This is how we approach the sunnah. Allah revealed to him these things that I'm about to mention right now about this month. And wallahi tallahi billahi, we can feel what I'm about to say. When 
the day that we're thinking Ramadan is about to come in, right? We're here and we're looking forward. It's Saudi see the, the moon with their sighting, so on and so forth. When Ramadan comes in, do you not feel different? Huh? Is there not a different feeling within inside of your soul, within the atmosphere around you? Do you not feel different? I ask you another question. In the end of the month, when we come here to the masjid, and that last maghrib that we pray with the imam, and he says, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, and then we go leave the masjid. How do you feel? Huh? You feel that Ramadan is not here no more. Is that not correct? Yes, because the atmosphere is changed. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala changes the atmosphere for us and he makes it an atmosphere that is feasible for us to do good and it stops us and prohibits us from doing evil. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, إِذَا كَانَ أَوَّلُ لَيْلَةٍ مِنْ رَمَضَانٍ صُفِّدَتْ الشَّيْعَطِينَ وَمَرَّةُ الْجِنَّ when the first night of Ramadan comes, may Allah allow us to see Ramadan, say Ameen. When the first night of Ramadan comes, what happens? The shayateen and the wicked of the jinn, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala weakens them and chains them. Those same shayateen that will come and whisper to you and entice you and say, backbite that person, slander that individual, eat from that haram money, look at that woman, look at that pornography, so on and so forth. Yeah, they do evil, they will entice you to do evil throughout the year, they will be chained. They will be weakened. That's already one of the rahmah or the mercies of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the barakat and the blessings of this month that these shayateen that have been yani, attacking us and trying to push us into evil and destroy us and make us from the inhabitants of the hellfire, they will be changed and they will be weakened in this month. Alhamdulillah. Naam. Also, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, وَفُتِّحَتْ أَبْوَابُ الْجَنَّةِ فَلَمْ يُغْلَقْ مِنْ هَابَابِ and every single gate of the eight gates of the paradise, they will all be opened. And not even one of them will be closed. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, does that not make you rejoice, my brothers and sisters? We hear the Jannah. We hear the Jannah. But is your heart yearning for the paradise? Is your heart jumping out your chest so you can be with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? So you can see Allah azza wa jal in the paradise? So you can eat qutufu hadani, so you can eat from the fruits of the paradise. No sleep, no tired, no hunger, no stress, no problems, no sickness, no backache, none, none of that. All bliss, all happiness, everything you want. Does your heart jump out your chest or are we stuck here to this dunya? When we hear, وَفُتِّحَتْ أَبْوَابُ الْجَنَّةِ فَلَمْ يُغْلَقْ مِنْ هَبَابِ Your heart should jump out your chest. All the gates of the paradise are open. Not even one of them is closed. Don't you want to be from the people that will be driven to the paradise? From the malaika driving us to the paradise. And we will see the guard of the paradise or the gate of the heaven. And he will say to you, سَلَامٌ عَلَيْكُمْ تِبْتُمْ فَدَخُلُهَا خَالِدِينَ سَلَامٌ عَلَيْكُمْ Peace be upon you. Tibetum, you did good in this life. You used to pray. You used to fast. You obeyed Allah Azza wa Jal. Tibetum, you did good. Fadakhuluha khalidin. And the gates open. And it said to you, enter into these gates forever and ever. Allahu Akbar. Huh? Don't you want to be from those people? When we hear all the gates of the paradise will be open in this month, and not even one of them will be closed, your heart should jump out your chest and rejoice and be happy. Also, from the thing that we're trying to stay away from, from why we're trying to abstain from sin, is this hellfire that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared for the usat, those who disobey Him. Huh? What is the virtue in this month? What is another virtue in this month? All of the gates of the hellfire will be closed and not even one of them will be open. Yes, salam. And my brothers and sisters, just because we're Muslim, and I'm sorry to give us this bad news, but just because we're Muslim does not mean that a portion of us is not going to be punishing that hellfire. There is going to be a portion of us that their sins outweigh their evil. And from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's justice, they are going to have to get cleansed in that hellfire before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ac accepts them in the paradise. This nar, this hellfire, my brothers and sisters, the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Narukum allati yuqaduha banu adam juz'un min sab'een juz'an min nari jahannam. The health or the fire that the son of Adam uses and ignites in this worldly life, this fire that we ignite here, what the Prophet of Allah say, he said it's only one seventieth 
of the intensity of the fire of the hellfire of the hereafter. Yes, salam. My brothers, my brothers, my sisters, there's nothing that's worth getting burnt in the hellfire. Nothing. There's nothing that is worth getting punished in that hellfire. Nothing. No woman, no money, no desire, no speech, nothing is worth that. In this month, all the gates of the hellfire will be closed and not even one of them will be open. Yes, salam. We should rejoice. We should be happy. Also, from the changing of the atmosphere, is that the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, even our souls, even our souls will be more inclined to do good and they will be more inclined to stay away from evil. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, وَيُنَادِي munadin." And a caller will call out. The ulama of hadith say, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will have an angel call out to the souls of mankind. Ya baghi al khair aqbil wa ya baghi al shar aqsir. A caller will call out to my soul and your soul and all of our souls, O oh, the one who is desirous of good. The one who wants to just do an ounce of good. The one who wants to pray. The one who wants to come near Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The one who wants to fast. The one who wants to give charity. The one who wants to do any good. Come near, come near. This is your time. This is your month. This is your time to shine. This is when you're going to go do much more than you were doing throughout the whole year. And this is why we see in Ramadan, the person who does not pray in the masjid the whole year, you see him in the masjid 30 or 29 days. Someone does not fast the whole year, they fast 29 to 30 days. Someone who is bakhil, they are stingy, they hold on to their wealth. You see them in Ramadan, they're open-handed. Subhanallah al Someone who does not, we never see them the whole year. They're in the masjid reading the Quran. MashaAllah, tabarakallah. Don't open the mushaf the whole year. Ramadan, they're reading the mushaf. They might finish it. Yes, salam. Huh? Look at Allah's virtue. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is making us more inclined to do good in this month. Test yourself. Do you do as much good in the 11 months like you do in Ramadan? Wallah, you surprise yourself. You surprise yourself. The amount of money some people are going to give in Ramadan, you may question yourself when Ramadan is over. Did I really say I'm going to give that? Huh? Aywa. And also on the other hand, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, and a caller will call out, وَيَا بَاغِيَ الشَّرْ أَقْسِرْ And the one who wants to do evil, fall back. This is not your time. Sit back. And this is why so many people, they repent in Ramadan. This is why so many people, they leave sin in Ramadan. And they embark on a new journey to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after Tawbah. And lastly, the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, وَلِلَّهِ عُتَقَاءُ مِنَ النَّارِ وَذَلِكَ كُلُّ لَيْلَةِ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he will save people's necks from the hellfire every single night of the month of Ramadan. Allahu Akbar. So it's upon us to rejoice and be happy. And thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this great virtue and this great bounty, my brothers and sisters in the deen. Now, inshallah, I would like to just mention a few points on how we should receive Ramadan and some tips for us to maximize the benefit in this month. Firstly, after us hearing all of these virtues of Ramadan, it's imperative upon all of us to rejoice and to be happy and to show our gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And how do we show our gratitude to Allah Azza wa Jal? That is by working hard and striving in this month. It is not lip service. It's not just saying Alhamdulillah. That's only one aspect of shukr. That's only one aspect of shukr. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the ulama, they have listed for us three aspects of shukr or three arkan of shukr. The first of them is acknowledging the bounty on our tongue. Huh? And the, also the second is Acknowledging the ni'mah inside of your heart, knowing that this ni'mah and this blessing is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَمَا بِكُمْ مِنْ نِعْمَةٍ فَمِنَ اللَّهِ You have no blessing except that it's from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And thirdly, اِعْمَلُوا آلَ دَاوُودُ الشُّكْرَى وَقَلِيلُ مِنْ عِبَادِي الشُّكُورُ O family of Dawood, do actions of gratitude. Do actions, do deeds to show your gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and only a few of my servants will be grateful. How do we show our gratitude to Allah azza wa jal, my brothers and sisters? By Work. Work hard this month. Set your schedule up. Make that intention. We speak about intentions, right? Make this intention that I am going to make this Ramadan my best Ramadan. I am going to pray every night in the Taraweeh. I'm going to go back home and I'm going to make Qiyam al-Layl. 
I'm going to fast the best fast I've ever fasted. Staying away from Muharramat. Stay away from backbiting. I'm going to mention Allah. I'm going to finish the Quran. I'm going to read Tafsir. If there's classes, I'm going to sit in those classes. So on and so forth. Naam. This is how we show our gratitude to Allah Azza wa Jalla. Number two, upon how we should meet this month is with Tawbah. Tawbah to Nusuha. To repent to Allah Azza wa Jalla. Wallahi, my brothers and sisters, all of us are sinners. All of us. Kullu bani Adam khatta. All the son of Adam are sinners. All of us. Throughout this whole year, you think about yourself. Don't point the finger at nobody. Don't think about that one. Don't think about that one. You look at yourself. As Umar ibn Khattab, radiallahu anhu, he said, Hasibu anfusukum qabla antu hasibu. Take account of yourself before the account is taken of you. Every single person, we have racked up sins. We have yani, made bad habits this year, especially with our cell phones. Look at the things we've been looking at, right? Look at the things, look at what's came out of our mouth throughout the whole year. Huh? How much ghiba, how much namima, how much slander. You know, how, subhanallah, ahsahullah wa nasu. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, he's recorded and they've forgotten. We've forgotten what we've done, but it's recorded with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Kiram and katibin, ya'lamuna ma tafa'alun. We have an angel on our right and our left, writing every single thing we do. Ma yalfidu min qawlin illa ladayhi raqibun atid. Mankind will not say any word except he has a writer recording. Ya salam. Naam. We should look back and look at ourselves, the things I've done this year. Let me meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this month of Ramadan with a clean heart and a clean soul by making tawbah. Repentance, sincere repentance to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't think I'm good. Don't think I'm all right. No, no, none of us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu tubu ila Allahi tawbatan nasuha asa rabbukum ayyu kaffir ankum sayyatikum wa yudkhilukum jannatin tajri min tahtiha al-anhar yawma la yukhzi Allahu an-nabiyya wal ladhina amanu ma'ahu nuruhum yas'a bayna aydihim wa bi'aymanihim yaquluna rabbana atmim lana nurana waghfir lana innaka ala kulli shay'in qadir o oh, you who believe return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with a sincere repentance with a sincere repentance Maybe, or your Lord, He will expiate your sins. He will forgive you of your sins. Allah is good, Allah is ghafoor. He wants to give you tawbah. He wants you to leave your sin. He wants to forgive you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not want to banish us to the hellfire. Allah wants us to repent. Allah wants us to come to Him. In this month of Ramadan, this is the month of tawbah. This is the month of taghir to change ourselves for the better. This trick that shaitan comes to us with, and he says, I'm just, I'm going to meet Allah with this sin. This is going to be my sin. I meet Allah with this sin. No. يَوْمَ لَا يَنْفَعُ مَالٌ وَلَا بَنٌ إِلَّا مَنْ أَتَى اللَّهَ بِقَلْبٍ سَلِيمٍ That day, يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ Wealth, children, worldly possession will not benefit anybody except the one who comes to Allah with a clean heart. That will benefit us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not look at your, 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 your look, your, your shape, how you dress, your wealth, your status. Allah does not look at your status or how you look or your wealth, your shape. But He looks at your hearts. How is your heart? Is it filled with hasad? Is it filled with greed? Is it filled with lust? Is it filled with jealousy? Is it filled with envy? Huh? We want to meet Allah with a clean heart. It begins with the tawbah. Repentance to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so He can clean this. This dirt that we have filled, this rust that we have filled, and we have stained our heart with. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, إِذَا أَذْنَبَ الْعَبْدُ نُكِتَتْ فِي قَلْبِهِ نُكْتَةٌ سَوْدَى When the slave sins, when he makes a sin, when he makes a mistake, when he errs, a black dot will be stained upon his heart. نعم. فَإِذَا تَاب But when he makes tawbah and he leaves a sin, سُقِلَ قَلْبُهُ His heart will be polished. This is what we want. We want to come into Ramadan with a clean heart so we can just elevate and increase. نعم. And what are the pillars of Tawbah, my brothers and sisters? First pillar of Tawbah, as the ulama have listed for us, is iqla' an al-dhamb. That when you are making the Tawbah, you leave the sin. If, if, you're, if your sin is you're drinking alcohol, right? You're not going to be saying astaghfirullah and you're drinking like this. That's not how, that's not correct Tawbah. You're not drinking, right? And then you're saying astaghfirullah at the same time. Right? And you think Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to accept that. No, you have to put the bottle down. 
even if you go back to it. Even if you go back to it. But you're not making the toba and you're drinking at the same time. You understand? You leave the sin while you're making the toba. Also, you have a firm or you have a, a, a extreme regret. You have extreme regret and sorrow that you ever fell into that sin. And nedim, remorse, remorse, regret that you did that. You, you, you can't يعني, make tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you don't even care what you, what you fell into. It doesn't bother me. Astaghfirullah. Whatever. Let me keep moving. Who are you playing with? It's Allah Azza wa Jal. Just like Allah hates it, you have to hate it. It's haram because of the things that Allah hates. Just like Allah hates it, you have to hate it. You should be hating every time you remember you did that. Every time you remember you say that. You should err. Uh, you should get angry. You should be mad at yourself. Why did I look at that? Why did I say that? Why did I take that? You should feel bad. This is a pillar of tawbah. Right? Nadim. And also, lastly, al-azima. Firm resolve, firm determination. Allah ta'ud ila dhamb. To not return back to that sin. Right? You have a firm determination to not return back to it. Does this mean we'll never return back to the sin? Does it mean that, Ya Isa? Does it mean we'll never return back to it? Does it mean that, right? Maybe you return back to it tomorrow. Bani Adam is weak. Allah has created mankind weak. Maybe you return back to it. But when you make that tawbah, you make a firm determination. You beg Allah Azza wa Jal that you will never return back to it. Even if you return back to it the next day. Naam. And if your sin is in regards to people, then you must return their rights back to them. So we meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this month of Ramadan with tawbah. The first... Uh, part or the first advice we mentioned was to rejoice and be grateful and we show our gratitude how ya nabil how do we show our gratitude to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala <laughs> huh you got it how do we show our gratitude to allah azza do we just say alhamdulillah huh prove it we believe it in our heart the ni'mah and we also what we what? Huh? We show to our actions, right? We show our gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through actions, correct? Number two, we said we meet Ramadan with Tawbah, Mustafa. What are the pillars of Tawbah? Are you going to look? You should leave the sin while you're making tawbah, right? All right? At that time, correct? Anybody else? It's okay. We're going to come back to you. Don't worry about it. Huh? Firm determination to not go back to it, even if you go back to it. Number two, we said what? Regret, remorse, remorse. What if your sin is involved of, with other people? You took somebody's right. You return their right back to Barakallahu feekum. Next point we want to get into is to actualize the hadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam من صام رمضان إيمانا واحتسابا غفر له ما تقدم من ذنبه famous hadith Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said whoever fasts Ramadan with Iman Iman in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Iman in the commandment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to fast Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says يا أيها الذين آمنوا كُتِبَ عَلَيْكُمُ السِّيَامِ كَمَا كُتِبَ عَلَى الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ Oh, you who believe, fasting has been made obligatory upon you, like it's been made obligatory upon the previous nations before you, so you may achieve taqwa, piety. Alright? So we fast for this reason. We fast because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded us to fast. We're not fasting because it's a aada. What's a aada? A habit. My family fasts, so I fast. My community fasts. So I fast. It's just what we do, right? This is the thing that we do, right? No. We fast because Allah commanded us to fast. Correct? Also, a person may not fast because he doesn't want someone, maybe his father or his mother or someone in the street that's Muslim, they say, you're breaking your fast, right? They will, not, they will fast out of fear of being blamed for breaking their fast, but it won't be for Allah Azza wa Jal. This is not the correct fasting either. مَنْ صَامَ رَمَضَانَ إِيمَانًا وَاحْتِسَابًا هو فاس رمضان إيماناً يعني إيمان الله سبحانه وتعالى إيمان in the commandment of Allah سبحانه وتعالى 
This fasting is fasting for Allah's sake and not fasting for any other reason than that. Right? Even though Allah says, and to fast is better for you. I'll tell you a story. Two years ago, my first masjid that I was in, when I came back from Sudan, brother, I did not see him the whole year. He comes in the masjid for Ramadan, mashallah, tabarakallah. And we see this. And may Allah bless all the brothers and sisters who come in Ramadan and give them the success to come throughout the year as well. Right? I don't like the term Ramadan Muslims. I don't want to put anybody down. Right? But anyway, he was that. So he comes in and he says, Yeah, Sheikh, I love Ramadan. I said, Oh, mashallah, barakallah, we all love Ramadan. He said, I love fasting. I said, Allahu Akbar, mashallah, new brother. He said, you know why? Every single Ramadan, I lose 10 pounds. Ya salam. Ya salam. Is this the reason for fasting, my brothers and sisters? Is the reason for fasting is that we go on a diet plan? It's not the reason for fasting. And if you're not careful, and this was on your mind, this is what your intention is going to be. To get in shape. To lose a little bit of the belly, lose a little bit of the weight. This comes in the people's heads. Be careful. Make sure the reason why you're fasting is for Allah's sake. And if you do it for Allah's sake, listen, everything we do for Allah's sake, we get all the other benefits anyway. And there's nothing in my life through experience that I've done. And I pray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts some deeds for me. There's nothing that I've done for Allah's sake except I got benefit from it. Even worldly benefit. That's, that's a fact. Okay? So we fast for Allah's sake. Not as a habit. Not so people say you are breaking your fast from the blame of the people. And not for a diet plan either. Right? Man sama Ramadan imanin. Wahdi sabin. Also, you must fast with expectation to be rewarded. You must fast with that expectation to be rewarded. And look at the reward of fasting, it's so, so much. The Prophet has narrated from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Hadith Qudsi, that Allah Azza wa Jal, He has separated fasting from all other aspects of worship. He said, All the deeds of Bani Adam is for him. Except fasting. Fasting is for me. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He has made fasting for Himself. In another narration, He said, All the deeds of Adam will be multiplied 10 times to 700 times, except fasting. Fasting is for me, and I reward for it. For it. Subhanallah. So, fasting is something amazing in reward. There's a gate in paradise as well. What is that gate called? Ya Salim. Huh? The gate, uh, so you, you're tired. They, was, they had a basketball tournament today. Ar-Rayyan, huh? Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he has told us, there's a gate in paradise called Ar-Rayyan. لا يدخله إلا الصائمون No one will enter this gate, my brothers and sisters, except the fasting people. Huh? No one will enter this gate except the fasting people. And when they enter that gate, that gate will be closed. A sharaf and an honor from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. للصائم للصائم فرحتان إذا أفطر فرح وإذا لقي ربه فرح. The fasting person will receive two joys. When he breaks his fast, he will be joyous. And when he meets Allah from seeing this great reward for his fasting, he will be joyous. نعم. Also, the Prophet of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم he said من صام يوما في سبيل الله بعد الله وجهه عن النار سبعين خريفة. Whoever fasts one day for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah will distance that person's face from the hellfire. A distance of 70 years. Allahu Akbar. Right? So when we fast, it might get hard. Uh, it may be hot in some countries. Uh, you may be working. You may be in school. Whatever the case may be. We must keep in mind the reward. Right? And if we fast with iman, with expectation to be rewarded, it will become what? Much more easier, easier for us to complete this 29 or 30 days, no matter what's going on in our life, right? So we must keep that in mind all the time, this great reward for fasting. What will happen? His previous sins will be forgiven. Whoever fast Ramadan, Imanan, Wahdi Sabin. Whoever fast Ramadan with Iman, and expectation and reward, his previous sins will be forgiven. Also, من قام رمضان إيمانا واحتسابا غفر له ما تقبب تقدم من ذنبه هو بفاس رمضان whoever prays and stands in the night in Ramadan with iman and expectation and reward, his previous sins will be forgiven. Also, the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said من قام ليلة القدر إيمانا واحتسابا غفر له ما تقب تقدم من ذنبه هو بفاس whoever stands in the night of power ليلة القدر 
with iman and expectation and reward his previous sins will be forgiven. Look at all these opportunities. We can speak all day on the virtue of Ramadan. Next point, inshallah. We said firstly, we receive Ramadan with being joyous, which will lead to huh? being grateful, right? Gratitude, right? We said number two. What's your name, brother? Adnan? You came with Mustafa? It's a good brother right here. Stay with him. What's the next point? Now look at your book, man. The next point. What did we mention? The next point? Salim. Tawbah. Tawbah. The pillars of Tawbah. Very quickly. Abu Yemen. Fil Khalf. Allahu Akbar. <laughs> inshallah, نحن ننتظر لك inshallah, أنت inshallah, أنت بعد inshallah تتكلم بإذن الله تعالى. عند عندك محاضرة بعد inshallah. جزاك الله خير. تمام. We said توبة, right? And we said the pillars of توبة. We just said now third what? Ah, uh, what's the hadith we mentioned? To fast Ramadan with iman, right? Not for any other reason except for Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. And what else? Expectation and reward, what is the benefit of that? Your previous sins will be forgiven. Now, and the ulama say this is from the minor sins. Al Muhim is still a benefit. Number four, and I want everyone to pay attention with me. I know everybody wants to eat and it's late. I just came back from Sudan. So none of you have an excuse. I'm jet lagging right now. My mind is not working properly. Uh, may Allah bless all of you. Okay, nobody has an excuse. The next point I want to speak about is very important, all of us understand this. And this is actualizing the purpose of fasting. Actualizing the fasting, the purpose of the fasting. Many people, they think that this fasting is just fasting from the food and the drink and sexual relations if you are a married person. This is yani, the borderline of the fasting. This is not the actual fasting, my brothers and sisters. And we see this by how, by the way people carry themselves in the month of Ramadan. Wallahi, I seen with my own eyes, may Allah forgive these brothers. Wallahi, I seen people fasting the whole day, breaking their fast with hookah. You know hookah? You know shisha, hookah? Breaking their fast with shisha, with hookah, waliyadu billah. Is ma sah ya shaykh? Mawjood indukum? A'udhu billah. This person did not understand what the fasting is about. A'udhu billah. People throughout the day not controlling their mouths. Fasting, ghiba, on the phone, in the house, slandering this person, backbiting that person. Be careful. Your fasting is going to be very, very deficient. Maybe you'll get no reward at the end of the day. And this is not my speech, this is the speech of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The true fasting, my brothers and sisters, is fasting from what Allah has made haram. This is the reason why we fast. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Baqarah in the 183rd verse, O oh, you who believe fasting has been made obligatory upon you, like it's been made obligatory upon the previous nation before you, لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ So you possibly will become righteous. So you possibly will become from the God-fearing muttaqeen. Right? Now, it is not, yani, it's no benefit for us to leave food and drink, but don't leave looking at the haram. Don't leave listening to the haram. Don't leave speaking the haram. Don't leave earning from the haram. This is not a benefit. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, مَن لَمْ يَدَعْ قَوْلَ الزُّورُ وَالْجَهْلَ وَالْعَمَلَ بِهِ فَلَيْسِ لِلَّهِ حَاجَةٌ أَنْ يَدَعْ طَعَامُهُ وَالشَّرَابُ Whoever does not leave false speech, backbiting, slandering, cursing people, ignorance, acting upon that ignorance, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Arham al-Nas, the most merciful of the people. He said, Allah has no need for that person to leave their food and their drink. That doesn't mean don't, don't stop fasting if you're sinning, but it means get yourself together. Get yourself together. Don't let anything come in the way of your reward, my brothers and sisters. You gotta be, you gotta, you gotta watch yourself. That's why the Prophet ﷺ, he said, if one of you are fasting, فَلَا يَرْفُثْ وَلَا يَفْسُخْ Don't yani, speak ill or do, or do wrong or do bad or, or commit haram. And if somebody comes and, and, and he verbally abuses you or tries to fight you, that's how important the fasting is. If a person verbally abuses you or tries to even fight you, فقول 
inni min un sa'im. Say, I'm a fasting person. Avoid this. We are supposed to be guarding our fasting. We should be guarding our fasting from outside, yeah, any interruption from a person coming trying to take you off course. Don't let anybody get in your way. Especially, you don't want to be screaming and yelling and doing all this thing while you fasting anyway. It's going to mess you up. I remember one time, guy got in a fight outside the masjid. Verbal fight. It was like, like an awesome time. Older man got in a verbal fight with somebody, yelling and screaming and so on. This happens in Ramadan sometimes, right? People, they don't have their coffee, they don't have their tea, so on and so forth. Yelling and screaming with this person. Older man in his 60s. He, 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 he and exerted himself so much, he had to break his fast. He had to break his fast because he was fighting with somebody, verbally going back and forth, cursing, going back and forth, and he, he, he just exerted so much energy, he had to go break his fast. SubhanAllah al-Azim. Right? So we're supposed to be guarding our fasting from outside uh, of forces or people that want to come and, and, and infiltrate or bother your fast and even your own self. Stay away from haram, stay away from looking at the haram. You're supposed to be guarding it so we can get the full reward. We don't want to be the people that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Rabbul Sa'im, Hadduhu min Siyamihi al wal Atish. Maybe a fasting person, the portion that they will get from their fasting is what? Being hungry and being thirsty. Is that what you want from your fasting? You fast from dawn to sunset, and all you get is becoming hungry and thirsty. You get no reward for it. Do you want to be that person? So if we don't want to be those people, we have to guard our fasting, my brothers and sisters. Now, next, inshallah, we said firstly what? So make sure everybody's listening. Ismail, what's the first point we made? Ismail Rahman, straight A student, mashallah. May Allah bless him. Huh? Toba was number two. We said we meet, we meet Ramadan. Huh? Gratitude, being joyous and grateful. And number two was Toba. Number three, we mentioned what? Huh? Huh? What did you say? Okay, fasting for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with iman and expectation and reward. Right? Actualizing this hadith. And number four, we just said what? Actual, the correct fasting. Right? The correct fasting. Naam. Number five, which is very important, and this one actually needs a whole lecture. And that is giving great concern and great time and great effort and care to the book of Allah Azza wa Jal. Right? The month of Ramadan and the Quran, they're inseparable. The month of Ramadan and the Quran are inseparable. If we look and we ponder over the ayat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded us to ponder and reflect over the Qur'an. Kitabun anzalnahu ilayka mubarakun liyadabbaru ayati. Allah says a blessed book that we descend down to you so people may reflect and ponder, right? If we ponder over the ayat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Baqarah, around the ahkam of fasting, the legal rulers of fasting, from our brother he read earlier today, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he describes Ramadan, what does he describe it with? Shahr Ramadan alladhi the month of Ramadan in which unzila fi al-Qur'an. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he describes the month of Ramadan, my brothers and sisters, he describes it. He doesn't mention these barakat that the Prophet sallallahu has told us. These blessings, the opening up of the gates of paradise, the closing of the gates of the hellfire, the call of calling out to our souls, the shi'ateen being chained, all these barakat. And they're all true. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the greatest blessing to mankind. And that's sufficient. And that is his wahi, his revelation. Because without it, we'll all be lost. And you see the people away from Allah's revelation, they are lost. In whom kal an'am bal hum adallu sabila. Allah says they are like cattle, rather they are more astray. When we are away from Allah's revelation, we will be more astray than the cattle, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned. When we turn away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the only reason we have any aspect of goodness is because of this Quran, the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Naam. Right? So this month of Ramadan, the sharaf, which made this the best of all of the shuhur, all of the months, is the sending down of this Quran and Kareem. And it's the sunnah of the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to give extra care and extra time to the Quran. The Prophet or Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhum, he said about the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أجود الناس. The Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was the most generous of the people. You are upon a great moral character. 
Ibn Abbas said, he was the most generous of the people. وَكَانَ أَجْوَدُ مَا يَكُونُ فِي رَمَضَانِ حِينَ يَلْقَاهُ جِبْرِيلِ And the most generous the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will be is in Ramadan when Jibreel will meet him فَيُدَارِسُهُ الْقُرْآنِ And they will review the Qur'an every single night. Right? So it's the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to increase with the Qur'an in the month of Ramadan. But what will happen to the Messenger of Allah? When he will increase with his Quran and he will meet with Jibreel for these sittings. Well, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Hina yalqahu Jibreel, ajwadu bil khayri min rih al mursala. And when the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will meet Jibreel for these sittings of the Quran, he will be more generous than the flowing wind. Ya salam. He will be more generous than the flowing wind. So when he will come and mix with this book of Allah and he will increase with it, the good he had inside of him would increase. He will become even better. And he was all, already the best. But he will come even better to the point that he would describe to be like the flowing wind. What does the flowing wind touch? Every single thing. Right? So this example, we should pay attention to it. When we fast, the correct fast, and we worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and we decorate our day with the reading of the Quran, and the studying of the Quran, and the reflecting of the Quran, and the reading the meanings and the tafasir of the Quran, Right? And acting upon the Quran, we will develop and become the best person. We become the best, you become the best you, right? The best Muhammad, the best Fatima, best Abdullah, right? Best Ismail, best Salim. You'll be the best person that you can be when you mix with this book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as we mentioned before many times, there's nothing that mixes with the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala except Allah Azza wa elevates them. Ramadan, the best of the shuhur. Laylatul Qadr, in which the Quran is revealed in the best of the nights. Jibreel alayhi salam, the best of the malaika. He was missioned with the missioning of the Quran. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the best of the creation. He is the one that the Quran was revealed to him and he was teaching the people. The ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the best of the ummah, right? The person who learns the Quran and teaches it, the best of all the people. Khayrukum man ta'allam al-Quran wa allama. The best of you are those who learn the Quran and teach it. The community that learns the Quran, they are the special chosen people of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inna lillahi ahlina min nas Allah has special chosen people from amongst mankind. Man hum ya Rasulullah, who are they, O Messenger of Allah? Hum ahlul Quran, ahlullah wa khasitu. They are the people of the Quran, the people of Allah, his special chosen people. As I mentioned, we need a whole lecture for this. We need a whole lecture for the Quran. But we say here, it is from the way of the early generations. It is from the way of the Salaf al-Salih. May Allah be pleased with all of them that they will give extra concern and extra time to the Qur'an. Some of them being narrated to read the Qur'an 60 times from the likes of Bukhari. From the likes of Bukhari, rahimahullah ta'ala. 60 times, that's once in the morning, once in the evening. 30 times, a khatma every single day. 15 times, every other day. So on and so forth. I'm not saying we're going to be like them, but these are our examples. These are our examples, right? Naam. So we must... Don't be the person who makes hajar. You know hajar, right? Don't be the person who abandons the Quran. Don't be the person who's not reading the Quran the month of Ramadan. No one has an excuse. I know our brother is here. When he comes and sits next to me, that means my time is up, right? This is the smooth way to tell you, listen, you're talking too long, all right? No one has an excuse. And we go to Surah Al-Muzammil. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the last page of Surah Al-Muzammil. I'm going to finish here, inshallah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and this is how important the Quran is, right? Allah Azza wa Jal, He tells us, فَقْرَأُوا مَا تَيَسَّرَ مِنْ Quran. He commands all of us, read what is easy from the Quran. Because we all have excuses, right? I'm working, I'm going to seek my livelihood, I'm sick, right? Look what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says here. He gives us the most, the huge, the biggest excuses any person can have. He says, read what is easy from the Quran. عَلِمَ اللَّهُ أَنْ سَيَكُونُ مِنْكُمْ مَرْضَى Allah knows that there will be from amongst you people who are sick. You know when you're sick, you're not enthusiastic, you're tired, you're on the bed, so on and so forth. Allah tells us, read the Qur'an. He says He knows there will be from amongst you those people who are sick. وَآخَرُونَ يَضْرِبُونَ فِي الْأَرْضِ يَبْتَقُونَ مِنْ فَضْلِ اللَّهِ And there will be others from amongst you who will be going out seeking their livelihood. Right? That busy is a man. As a man, we know, maybe the youngsters don't know, once you've got a family, wife, kids, people, relatives, you got to spend money, rent, buy food, cars, so on and so forth, your mind is focused on what? Ya ayyur rijal, oh men, focus on making some money, right? It's going to busy your head, right? No doubt about it. Allah says this next one, they will go out and they will be seeking their sustenance. 
And another group of you will be going out fighting in the way of Allah. And then Allah says, after making these huge excuses, read what is easy for you from the Quran. We don't have no excuses. We have no excuses. For our brothers and sisters, open up the Quran, make a program with yourself. Do as much as you can in this month. The more you give, the more you're going to get. The more you give, the more you're going to get. Lastly, I'm going to finish right here. Make the firm determination within your own self. This is going to be my best Ramadan. Huh? This is going to be my best Ramadan. And you say to yourself also, maybe this will be my last Ramadan. Hmm? Maybe this will be what? My last Ramadan. Right? So you want to make this your best Ramadan. Naam. Subhanak Allah wa bihamdika ashadu wa ilaha 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 tastaghfiru tu bilaik May Allah bless all of you May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless this masjid, masjid Siddiq May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless the imam May Allah bless the management May Allah bless the brothers and the sisters who volunteer here May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless the community May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of you who are coming out May Allah bless all of you in your Ramadan and give you success in it except from you Allahumma amin Barakallahu feekum Assalamu alaikum Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi Takbir Allahu akbar I think uh, our Sheikh did justice to the topic in very uh, particular detail in so many ways and so many aspects. Inshallah, I know uh, the Iqama for Salat al Isha is uh, fast approaching. Uh, I just have uh, one other person I'll ask to, to come up for just a, a few minutes, uh, maybe five minutes, inshallah. Uh, our brother, our Sheikh uh, Shamik Sahadat, is here. Uh, Sheikh Shamik is the uh, regional director of the uh, of ICNA Relief in the southeast, uh, but he's also someone that has been here at Masjid al Sadiq in the past, and we'll ask him just to share uh, a, a few minutes with us, inshallah. Uh, Sheikh Shamik. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala Wa nashadu an la ilahe illallah wa ahdihu la sharika lah Wa nashadu anna muhammadan abduhu rasooluh Please share, it's okay Shaykh, I uh, just got to say, you know Talk about that brother said he losing weight I gain weight in Ramadan How do we counteract that one, you know But alhamdulillah, mashallah Our beloved Shaykh Ibrahim, mashallah uh, Spoke vastly about the month of Ramadan and um, you know give us a lot of snippets of what we need in this month of Ramadan and I hope we grasp the concept of what he was talking about because it's very important uh, that you know to understand and, and he spoke about the fadail and the virtues of this month and some of the actions in which we should be doing in this month of Ramadan and no need in being repetitive but the entirety of everything that he talked about Everything that he spoke about, the hadith of the Prophet, the ayats of the Quran, you know, talking about the concept of, uh, you know, uh, fasting and, and tie it all back in at the end. It all boils down to one simple word. And that is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions it in the Quran. The entire purpose of this month comes down to this one word that taqun taqwa in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to connect all of these actions you see Ramadan is not a month there's just one action is what you're going to do and then you know it follows it's it builds up with so many good things it builds up with so many actions it, it has different branches to it just think about Ramadan it has different it's one month that have many branches it has so much of brand, yet each branch has its fruit, has its own flavor, has its own fadail, has its own virtues. Whether you're given charity in the month, whether you're fasting, and of course fasting is prescribed, you don't have no ifs and buts. If you're not sick or you are not within the, you know, uh, you know uh, the concept of not being someone who's able to fast, even at that point, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, you're gonna give fidya. You're still not off the hook. That's how important it is. But every single action, the, the salah, the taraweeh salah, praying your fard, uh, giving charity in the month, you know, staying up in the night, reading uh, Qiyamul Layl, 
uh, you know, recite the Quran. So many different things. All leads up to what? لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ So take from this month, inshallah. It is the month that is full of blessings. It is the month that it has so much of reward in it that the Prophet wasallam said, if we understand this month in Ramadan, if we understand the sweetness of this month of Ramadan, we will wish for it every single day in our lives. So take full advantage of it, mashallah. I see Sheikh brought all of his students. Uh, you walked in here and I see everybody like the whole murid followed, mashallah. And it's so good seeing so much of youngsters in this masjid. And inshallah, you know, it, makes, it should make us happy that the banner of Islam is upkeeping. And you look around, mashallah, and, and we see, you know, the younger generation upheld in this deen and taking it again to another level inshallah may allah bless this community may allah bless each and every one of you allahumma barik lana fi rajab wa sha'ban wa balighna ramadan may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us enter amongst those who see the month of ramadan uh, just as a closing thought uh, you know just i was i was coming here and one of my friend was being buried in atlanta tonight uh, today actually and um inna wa inna ilayhi rajiun and and just as a reminder how fragile life is and you know you take full advantage of today because you don't you, you're not sure if you're gonna live to see it yet right and subhanallah he prayed uh, maghrib salah at uh, the local masjid I, i'm from dallas georgia it's you don't know where dallas is it's not even on a map so <laughs> but it's such a small town we kind of know everybody we know all the muslims that moves in and subhanallah this is a brother who's a hafiz al quran an elder brother and subhanallah this brother prayed maghrib he actually would lead salah if i'm there i would lead if he's there normally he's there most of them so he leads and he was coming back home from maghrib salah got in an accident and died the family didn't know after a few hours later but here it is that i met his son a few days before and we were talking about ramadan and his father was preparing for ramadan to lead taraweeh in that local masjid so this, do not take this for granted what our beloved Shaykh has talked about. Do not take it for granted. Make it count. Make every single day count. If you reach it, make every day count because you're not sure if you're going to live to see the end of it. And if you live till the end of it, take full advantage of that month and let it be your Iman booster till the next year, inshallah. Subhanakallahumma alihamdika nashadu an la ilaha ilaha ant wa nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilaha. بارك الله جزاك الله خير شيخ شميك is uh, he mentioned he happened to be here in New York and visiting us and uh, alhamdulillah I'm glad he was able to uh, provide us with a few minutes and some advice as well may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy on both of our speakers and our qari Ramadan that recited may he bless them and increase them in knowledge ameen Inshallah, we'll uh, call the Adhan and um, we'll pray the, the Fard of Salat Alisha and then uh, have dinner. Just before the, I ask the Muazzin to come to, to the microphone to call the Adhan, a reminder, uh, Inshallah, for Ramadan here at Masjid al Sadiq, uh, Qari Ramadan will be leading the Tarawi Salah and we have Qiyam Ulayl every Saturday night. Qiyam Ulayl, the Masjid is open. We encourage the brothers to come out. Uh, on Saturday nights, we'll have uh, uh, brothers that lead the Salat uh, al-Tahajjud, and we have Suhoor on Sunday morning, as well as in the last 10 nights. Jazakumullah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.